So you're shopping for a turbo. You've narrowed down the size that you want to go with for your vehicle. You've narrowed down the brand of the turbochargers that you want. Uh, it's probably coming down to choosing between a journal bearing or ball bearing turbo. There's a lot of big differences between the two, uh, but the main one that you're probably seeing is price. So my name is Alex. I'm here at MA Performance. Today, we're gonna find out the differences. Let's go. So we've got these two turbochargers here. Now, if you're looking at them, you know, they look like a turbo. You know, big turbo, kind of a littler turbo, right? But you know, no real differences. You probably can't even tell. Nobody's gonna know. They're gonna know. How would they know? Because it's all on the inside that matters. So the first one that you probably got your eyes on is drill bearing turbo. They're nice and cheap, easy to get into, affordable. They're awesome. Um, so the journal bearing does not require an oil restrictor, which is kind of one of the main differences when you're actually installing it into your car. You don't need to worry about that. Uh, the journal bearing actually relies on that oil pressure to kind of help things expand in there. And, and so everything rides on that film of oil. So oil pressure is very important in this case. Uh, a journal bearing though, does not have the type of response or quick spool times that you might expect you know, out of, out of what you want. So drivability is gonna be uh, another deciding factor here when choosing between a uh, journal bearing and ball bearing. Now the ball bearing turbo uses a, a group of ball bearings uh, that support the shaft inside of there. So if you think of like a skateboard bearing, that, that's a ball bearing. That's essentially what's going on inside of this guy. Yeah. So now that we know the basic uh, differences between what's going on inside the turbochargers, talking about kind of the uh, pros and cons of both advantages, uh, the ball bearing turbo, like I said, is going to spool up a little bit quicker on average, depending on what application it's going on to, about 15% sooner. So that's going to lead to quicker acceleration, um, just more efficient throttle response, everything that you like. Um, and also what that means too, since it is more efficient and it doesn't rely on oil pressure as much as the journal bearing turbo, uh, that's less load on your engine. Your oil pump doesn't have to work as hard and in turn, uh, your engine doesn't have to be either. Less wear on uh, rotating components, which is always cool. Another pro to the uh, to the ball bearing design is that it's less common to to leakage. You know, sometimes you see those cars and you know they're smoking out of the exhaust or you know, they got oil just dripping out of everywhere. Um, that's more prone in the journal bearing. So if you do everything right with the journal bearing, you know, you get the proper size restrictor on there, uh, everything like that. At the end of the day, the ball bearing is going to be the more reliable one. One pro to the little journal bearing over here, though, is uh, if you do ever run into a failure situation. Uh, it's going to be a little bit easier to repair. Uh, it's less kind of specialty tools, specialty parts, stuff like that. Uh, really anywhere that can rebuild a turbocharger can rebuild a journal bearing turbocharger. Not every place, is, every place that uh, rebuilds turbos can rebuild a ball bearing turbo. Sometimes you got to send them out specifically to the manufacturer um, who created it uh, to repair, which is kind of a downside uh, you know, in terms of turnaround times and, and cost. All right, and so the final pro that goes to the journal bearing turbo here is cost. You know, everyone wants to save a buck or two when they can, and the journal bearing is always going to be cheaper. You know, you can expect to save anywhere from five hundred to even a thousand dollars off of comparable turbochargers. All right, so now that we know all the differences, I just want to share a little story with you guys because I was in your shoes too at one point. I was watching these kind of videos, I was doing research uh, for my own build, which you know, if these guys want to put a picture of. This is my turbo E36 as seen here. Um, so I wanted to, you know, do things pretty cheaply. It was my first time turbocharging a naturally aspirated engine. And I chose a journal bearing turbo, a Borg Warner S366 to be exact. Uh, it made all the horsepower that I wanted to, over 750. It's awesome. It's good fun. Uh, and so my friend Gus, he decided to copy me and also turbo his E36. And he chose a bigger ball bearing turbo. Um, once he got his car done, we actually decided to have a little race, see if there was actually a big difference. One, two, three. I still made over 100 horsepower uh, at the time. He was keeping it kind of mild. And just because of the sole advantage that his turbocharger would spool up so much quicker than mine, uh, he actually was able to pull away from me. And that 100 extra horsepower didn't really matter because by the time he was already gone, he was gone. So take that information with as what you will. Uh, at the end of the day, it's your choice. But I am here to help. So if you have questions on turbochargers for your build, give us a call here at MA Performance. You can always ask for me. My name is Alex. Be happy to help you out.